Then we come to Hakuin. And, and I could talk for two hours about Hakuin. Because he, because he lived so recently, we know a lot about him. And Hakuin, for Japanese Zen, and for people today that practice in America, uh, pointed out a couple things that had been pointed out before, but people had kind of ignored them. And one of the things was this constant argument. And this argument goes on in Buddhist circles today. Is enlightenment an absolute so that when you become enlightened, you have arrived? The Buddha talked about himself as the thus come one or the thus arrived one. So when you become enlightened and you have an enlightenment experience and your teacher tests you and certifies you, are you done? And monks argue about this. Some monks really feel, and I've known them, and some really good monks feel that once you have finished, say, your koan training or once you have been certified, you never have to do zazen again. You are awakened. It, you're now going into a different stage of your life, whether it's social activity or uh, uh, being the parish priest. or And there's a very common belief in that in both schools. In the Soto school, they go off for their formal training and they come out, and some of those priests will get up in the morning and do zazen, and some of them will sleep in, you know, because they, they look at that. I know American friends that look at their time of formal training. That's when meditation was done. And they feel that any insight they gained, they're going to operate the rest of their life on that insight. Okay? But they went through that arduous formal training, and now they're done with it, and now they've got other things to do. Maybe things they like to do. Because <laughs> right? I've, known, I've known some Zen monks that really did not like to meditate, that would volunteer for kitchen duty and a heartbeat to get out of that zendo. Um, Hakuin had an awakening experience. And there's the, the great story of him. He's out and he's doing the begging. Now, Japanese monks don't go out and beg every day, but they, they go out a couple times a month and they put on a special hat and they go up to the house and they've got a little handbell and they've got a bag and, and, you know, a bag for rice and a bag for money and they go up and they hold the bag open and they never look at the person. You know, it's very much like what the Buddha taught. And then people will give them a gift. And sometimes they'll just walk through the village slowly, very, very slowly. And you could go up and put a little rice in their bag. And Hakun was out doing this. And uh, he awoke. He solved his koan. And he just stood like a statue at a crossroads. And an old lady, who was very devout, noticed this monk standing there for an extended period of time, grabbed up her broom and went out and started beating him because she figured he was drunk. So Hakuin goes back to his teacher and relates the experience, and the teacher tests him and certifies him as awakened. Tests him in great detail. Hakuin, all his life, was, as Sandy would say, a Zazen maniac. You know, he was, that's who he was. So Hakuin gets done, and, and he goes off, and now he goes into phase two. I'm done with my training here. Now I'll go off and I'll do whatever it is that you do after you get done being awakened. And he starts to visit temples. This was a standard practice. And this practice was used to, to cause an awakened person to come to maturity. Because when you wake up, contrary to anything you've read, you do not have all the answers Okay, you have an answer, and then you have a whole lot of question marks floating around with it. And this way of looking at the world has to be integrated into who you are. Even though you have had an opening, you still have to integrate it into your everyday life. you still got bad habits. You don't, you don't get purged of everything you'd like. It'd be nice, but that's only in fairy tales. You don't get purged of all those habits, but now you have a new way of looking at things. And so... One of the, the standard, normal, everybody did it kind of thing, because not everybody woke up, you know. There were actually some people who put a lot of effort out and, and didn't feel they make any progress. They did, but they got confused. They thought they had to have this big 
overwhelming experience. So he, he did what was common. He started visiting temples like those two monks. And he would stay a few evenings at the temple and he would have tea with the master and they would have Dharma combat, which sometimes didn't look like any kind of combat at all. It looked like just normal stuff. But these two guys were going, we say, belly to belly. And the teacher would ask a question and the and a new, newly awakened Buddha would give his response. And sometimes he'd do pretty good and sometimes he wouldn't. And this was only combat in the sense that your senses have to be completely out there. You have to be paying attention to everything. Can't get casual. They didn't arrive and say, would you tell the master that a new, newly uh, awakened Buddha is going to take a long nap today and uh, I'll let you know when I need some food. It wasn't that kind of thing. He still was in that, that position of being a uh, lower monk and uh, a junior. And a lot of times he was visiting famous masters who were very old and intimidating. And that's the first lesson. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be awake. And how come I'm still intimidated by this guy? Because that guy is intimidating. He's got big eyebrows and he's he's played the game a long time. Well, what happened to him is he traveled around and he, he got to a temple. And the master was sitting on the temple because it was very hot. And, you know, Japan gets humid in the summertime. And he was sitting outside at a little table with his oldest disciple. And he was having his lunch. And uh, Hakuin's coming down the road. Now, he's been on the road for a while, you know. And he's been awake for a while, and he's feeling pretty good about himself. And he gets within a hearing distance, and this master starts to laugh. And the closer he gets, the more the master laughs. And he gets up to him, and he introduces himself, does a bow right there, everything. And the master looks at him, and he says, all I see is an earth-dwelling demon. Go away kind of hurt Hawkwind's feelings. Hawkwind came back a few times. Same repeat. No matter where the teacher was, he just started laughing at him. So Hawkwind now became humble and thought, maybe I missed something. And so he got humble and asked the teacher to take him as a student. And the teacher did, and Hawkwind had a second awakening. On his second awakening, he no longer trusted the process. And he said to his teacher, how can you be sure? How can you know that this is it? Because there was an assumption that his first awakening was somehow incomplete. And now he had completed that. The teacher said, no, you're awake. You're awake. He tested him, tested him, awake. Hakuin had a third awakening a little later. And then Hawkwind went out into the country. There had been wars, and uh, lots of temples had been damaged. And he moved into a very large temple complex that had been deserted. And we know that the entire time he lived there, the roof in his endo leaked. And that his students were very frustrated with him because they would say to him, Master, shouldn't we be out fixing the, the roof? And Hawkwind would say, Zazen, fix roof. Zazen, fix roof. I think we'll do Zazen. So he lived in this very, very poor temple. And he lived the rest of his life there. And his spin that he gave on things was that that enlightenment never stops. That even the Buddha expanded his enlightenment, expanded the way he saw the true world. And that you can have an enlightenment experience, and it's not the end of practice. So Hakuin brought along this idea that practice goes on for life. Not necessarily that you're going to spend the same amount of time in a zendo that people in training spend. But you are going to be doing zazen, just as Dogen had taught hundreds of years before. Every activity in your life is zazen. You do it with the same intensity and the same zeal. And that includes holding babies and watching television and cleaning dishes and just taking a walk. You do that with the same mind that you do zazen on the cushion. Well, this was rediscovered. Zen had fallen into just being almost superstition. Ceremony and superstition and form and no substance. And Hakuin revitalized Zen all across Japan. 
never had any particular position, was not that important in his time. But he was so important that just about every lineage line got touched, kind of like the Sixth Patriarch. And in Rinzai, they all looked to Hakuin, and it wasn't that long ago. And he also formulated the system of koans that's traditionally used now. And he stopped using mu as a beginning koan. He invented the koan, you know, the sound of two hands clapping. What is the sound of one hand? And that was his first koan for his students. I have never been able to find any copy. I know they exist, but they're secrets. <laughs> you know, I've never been able to get a copy of his formulation because he divided koans into three groups. Easy ones, middling hard, and the most difficult. And he would have his students do the easy ones, then he would have them do the middling hard, and then he would have them do the very hard ones. But when they got done with the last one, they were never encouraged to believe that practice now stopped. Because Hawkwind, like Dogen, meditated every day of his life up until his death. And Hawkwind lived a long time. So we have marvelous pictures that he painted. He was a great brush artist, um, you know, and he certified everybody in his brother. Hakuin used to teach meditation to all the lay people. He's famous for going out and sitting on the, the dike around the rice field and talking to the farmers and having lunch with them and always taking a little bottle, a bottle of sake in his sleeve and teaching them the Dharma. And he wrote, there is a tradition called Inca. And you receive Inca and in at least the active Zen company, countries like uh, where, where it's active in China, in Korea, in Japan, there is a notion of Inca. And Inca is when you're certified as a teacher. And you get a document. And the document says, you are a teacher. You are now a master. And, and Hakuin passed them out like playing cards. He had housewives and fishmongers. and All they had to do was do Zazen and wake up to their true nature. He did not require that they be a fully awakened, completely developed Buddha because Hakuin by this time knew that that's only an idea. Like Maizumi Roshi used to say, enlightenment's like the sky. It's just vast. And it, the further you go, the more broad it becomes. And that comes from Hakuin's insight. But he, Hakuin lived at a time that the whole notion of you and me becoming enlightened had just about died out. People were just going through the motion. He rediscovered that process. And he rediscovered the truth that everybody can become awakened.